Gonna travel them planets and them galaxies. Gonna take it places you never thought you'd see. Gonna kiss the stars like a lover walk till the empty space round my body. Hello, beautiful beings. This is Maru, and Happy New Year 2018. This is a daily planetary translation for January the 1st, 2018, and today is also a pretty epic full moon in the sign of Cancer. It's happening with the sun, the collective sun at 11 degrees of Capricorn, in a direct opposition to the moon at 11 degrees of Cancer. This is actually going to be happening at 6.23 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and the degrees will be in an exact opposition at 11 degrees and 37 minutes of these two cardinal signs. Now the sun is in the cardinal earth sign of Capricorn and the moon will be in the cardinal water sign of Cancer. This is our divine masculine and feminine coming into unity but there's a lot of things that are going on and just after this happens the moon will continue its transit through the sign of cancer and it will conjunct exactly at 14 degrees and that is going to be conjuncting Sirius so the star seeds from the location of Sirius is going to have a heavy heavy activation included in this full moon activation on this first day of the year this is also part of a grand water trine that is forming a kite so we have a grand trine grand water kite and it's all stabilized within the earth of the cardinal Capricorn energy and this is deep this is going to be happening at 11 22 p.m. this is whenever the moon will meet at Sirius exactly so we're going to talk a lot about that and this is a pretty epic day okay there's nothing um, that is missing from this day in particular as we step into a whole new earth a whole new vibration and before i get into any of the aspects of the chart other than that opposition of sun and moon and the moon conjuncting sirius i am going to go ahead and read the degrees for everything occurring today because this is a big deal for us to just lay the groundwork or the foundation of the energy so that whenever we go into the information we can really grasp it on a different level now the sun at 11 degrees of capricorn is a young boy joyously kisses a fat old lady polarities go against each other in order to find each other again when they are still busy going against each other, they pull you apart. And this experience is so definite, definitive, so intense, and so traumatic that you learn to bring the polarities back together any way you can. The journey to make this possible is an extensive one because along the way you must mediate between discrimination and release. You are walking a collective karmic edge between the old and the new, in which both of them must be honored in just the right way. Yet the work it takes to bring polarities together in fresh ways is monumental. And that work is utterly redemptive of infinite meaning and scope, in opening doors and letting totality in by conviction, by affinity, and by surrender to the greater inevitable. Now this is a really powerful sun degree for stepping into our perceivable new year. And this is something that we're going to get into whenever we talk about Sirius because in ancient Egypt, they celebrated the time whenever the sun was conjuncting Sirius and Sirius was ascending, rising through the, you know, um, celestial travels that's whenever the new year was honored so we're at the exact halfway point of that we're at the opposition point and so whenever um we're talking about star seed locations and we're talking about where you originate from and looking at your planets within your chart we don't actually recognize chiron as an indicator of a star seed location even though there is some knowledge that we can use from that aspect but what we're talking about is your sun, your moon, your rising, your midheaven, your IC, your DC, um, Venus, Mars, Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, 
did I forget anybody? Jupiter, <laughs> you know, Venus. It's it's like all of those planets that are in the sky. We look at them within a two degree orb, either before or after these um you know, activations of location. So Sirius for thousands of years was located at 13 degrees of Cancer. So a lot of you in your natal chart will have something that's conjuncting 13 degrees. It is now moved to 14 and these are called fixed star locations. Okay. So the term fixed star means that they do not freaking move for these thousands of years that I'm talking about. Sirius is now located at 14 degrees and five minutes of the sign of Cancer. It's located in the constellation of Canis Major. It's referred to as the Dog Star, the God Star, the Silver Star, the Eastern Star. <laughs> We're going to go into some deep esoterics on this because there's so much meaning. And this is what I really want to explain to you all is when you're looking at your star seed locations, you need these personal planets, these planets in your chart, um, these huge aspects, again, to be conjuncting at two degrees. Conjunction means right next to, okay? So two degrees before, two degrees after your star seed from that location, whenever planets oppose within two degrees, okay? So directly opposite from, which is what we're gonna experience today with the sun, or excuse me, with the moon conjuncting there at Sirius. And in a couple of days, the sun is going to oppose Sirius. And it's going to open up a super stargate portal that we're going to get deeper into over these next few days. It's not to be missed on this information because this is some deep um, esoterics of everything that we have gone become to know as this planet and the way that it operates. This is what's hidden behind the veil, the deep, deep occult. And for those who have eyes that can see, and for those who have ears that can hear, for those that are on the Pimp My Matrix, Uranus Retrograde Revolution, Uranus is going direct tomorrow. And this is actually going to be happening at, let me see, 611 on the 2nd. And this is uh, AM, 611 AM Pacific Standard Time. Um, that's pretty epic actually, because <laughs> we're going to be reading next for the degree of Cancer, which is represented by the month 6. We're going to be re or reading the degree for 11 degrees, so that's 611. Um, yeah, just saying, and that's 8, numerology. And infinity, coming back to the truth of all of our origins within the mind, body, and soul, trinity. Okay, so let me not get too distracted by all of this, because we are coming into these polarities, okay? The truth and the non-truth. Truth is going to be illuminated in a very large way moving forward, especially whenever Uranus does go direct and we start to progress back through all of those higher degrees of the sign of Aries, which is a cardinal, you know, fire sign. So we have a lot of cardinal energy being just kicked up in general today and tomorrow. And it's going to be um, pretty epic on this level because, you know, a young boy joyously kisses a fat old lady. Polarities go against each other in order to find each other once again. And that's what we're going to have to experience within ourselves and how it looks represented in the outer world. So, you know, leading up to the new year, we talked a lot about the narcissists, the gaslighters, the false light of power. Those who have masks are going to be falling off. We're going to be seeing things in a lot clearer perspective, a lot faster than we ever have before. So we may still fall into the trap per se of narcissistic people, we may still show some narcissistic tendencies, but the thing is, is that we are on a rapid evolution to recognize that and transmute it immediately, harmonize. So again, bringing all that energy in, alchemizing it and using it as a new form of the force, of life force, and, and bringing it into your center for the transmutation because you realize that you are the epicenter of the universe and everything is actually really revolving around you, which is a very narcissistic type of thought and self-love is also but it's not 
the same that puts other people and in, in their integrity, their liberty, their free will at jeopardy. Because this is the thing, whenever you rob someone of free will, you are so setting yourself up for the biggest failure that you could possibly ever have coming because universal law is in full effect. And universal law is not the laws of man that have previously congratulated others for stomping on backs, on faces, on necks in, in order to rise above just so that they have a perceivable higher perspective. And this is that you know, polarities going against each other to find each other again within a zero point oneness consciousness energy, moon opposite sun. We are finding the balance between these two points because we are staring ourselves, our shadow side and our illuminated self directly in the face. And which one of those wants to win? Is it Anakin Kane or is it Darth Vader? You know, this is the same being Anakin Kane and Darth Vader. If none of you guys are really familiar with the story that comes before Darth Vader in Star Wars, check it out because Anakin Kane was Darth Vader. And he became Darth Vader because he was protecting what he loved, but he was not going about it in the correct way. He was allowing the false use of power, the false light of power to corrupt his soul. When you are still busy going against each other, they pull you apart. And this is a lot of what's been going on. A lot of people are liars, okay? And they cannot help themselves. They, you know, people, especially whenever they have uh, Sun conjunct Neptune, it's like they're on the world stage constantly within their own imagination. And this is just a representation. This is not to say that anybody out there who does have their Sun conjuncting Neptune is going to be a liar. But a lot of people who were born you know, during the time frame that Saturn was last at the galactic center, do have their sun conjuncting Neptune. If you are someone out there, a, Can a Capricorn in this solar return time frame that we're speaking from right now, you actually do have Neptune in the sign of Capricorn and you have it close. As we get, you know, further into the month, we're going, or yeah, further into the month because now we're in January. This is going to express itself stronger with those who just came through their Saturn return and have Neptune on their sun. They are being tested on what is fucking real with their lives, what is real with their expressions, their words, their actions, their energy, their vibrations. And a lot of people are going to be seemingly pulled apart in order to be put back together because they are representing an evolution of consciousness that previously put us into some very strong and very rigid places that we have had to by claw, tooth, nail, pull ourselves out of the fucking mud in order to bloom within the lotus position of the sun, okay? This is going to come heavy into play as we get deeper into this. And this experience is so definitive and so intense and so traumatic that you learn to bring the polarities back together any way you can. And I'm sorry, you know, this is a thing the universe does give you your karma for what you are due, whether that is positive or whether that is negative. And every moment that you're alive, breathing, interacting, you are accumulating one or the other, and you're having to transmute and process and regenerate each and every molecule of that, you know, intake. This is why we have to come into these harmonies. But for some of us, some of us who have not like really grasped this new transition, this new concept, this is going to be very intense, very traumatic, and it is going to bring these polarities back together at all freaking costs. And it's going to cost a lot of people all of their illusions and all of their delusions. It's going to cost them all of their lies in monetary, physical, spiritual, and just every dimension. Okay, some of us are pulling our fractal selves back together into the whole and we're reaping the benefits of what they do in other levels of consciousness. And others of us are still going to do that, but from a very, very, very stark reality that's going to come just, you know, like just damn that fucking hurt on the universal cosmic two by four, because don't forget, don't forget, we have Saturn in the sign of Capricorn right now. We have Venus, we have the Sun, and we also have Pluto. Okay, that's a four-planet stellium. Throughout this year, you know, or month, 
<laughs> throughout this year for sure but throughout this month of january we're going to be working up to whenever mercury joins this whenever the moon comes here and we'll have fucking six planets in the sign of capricorn believe me shit is getting real up in here so this is where everything the bullshit stops your bullshit stops okay all of it the reality the stark fucking blazing reality is setting in. Your polarity is just about to put its foot right up your raw glut and burn Babylon down to the ground, okay? And right now, a lot of us are representing Babylon in our ways of trying to project mind control, mind suppression, you know, trying to use those narcissistic things. And it's like, we, we get tricked by narcissists because there is that duality, those two parts that are so different from one another. You know, the amazing charm and, and gracious love and the light that they illuminate and um, the attention that they give and the, the care and all of that. And then they just uh, the flip into the dark side. They, they You meet them as Anakin Cain and then you, you know them as Darth Vader. And this experience on both sides, it's like, which way do I go? And which one am I trusting? It's 3.13 p.m. my birth time. Um, you really try to understand how does this go down in the neighborhood? Okay, for your own self. And am I choosing correctly? Because it's sometimes this person could be so amazing. And then at other times, you know, my face is black and blue or my soul is black and blue. But are you really going to let them hold you down anymore? And that's the thing is that, you know what? People can still play their narcissistic gaslighting games in 2018. But you know what? They're not going to work no more. The next generation of homeless motherfuckers is going to be narcissists and gaslighters. Okay? And those homeless people that are out there really holding space and really doing good work within themselves and just caught a bad streak of luck, they're all going to catch the windfall. Okay? So there's going to be a trans... Um, a transmutation of power. There's going to be a transition of power. Capricorn represents power within the structure, government structure, personal structure of the incarnation that we are living here on earth. It's intense. The journey to make this possible is an extensive one because along the way you must mediate between discrimination and release okay so this is what i was just talking about on weighing the scales of balance between you know how do we judge these people in our lives how do we proceed forward do we give up on them do we invest in them and here's the thing the self-sacrificing is over because we are drawing boundaries boundaries that are not detrimental to self or others and we are not self-sacrificing in ways that is detrimental to self or others this is you know operating with an ebb and a flow 24 hours a day um, so that we can come into this place where you are walking a collective karmic edge between the old and the new in which both of them must be honored in just the right way. So we're not just throwing one out the window and only bringing another one in or vice versa. We're gaining this unified balance again of the reflection that we're seeing so that we know how to perform proceed forward in what way to proceed forward when the occasion has called for it okay so there is no one solution to every problem there is no one truth for every person there is no one energy that is deemed positive or negative this is all individualistic within a collective stream and this is all going to have to be really ran through the self okay so there's a lot that has been going on up until now where we're talking to everybody, getting information from everybody, you know, taking everybody's advice for this or for that. And we need to really come to this place of trust within ourselves because we're coming up to some transits through the year that are going to make some shit really fucking clear that there is no one outside, that it really only is inside and the only reliable source of truth, of sustainability, of love, of justice, of fairness, of equality is within the Self, and unless we transmute all those all of those energies on an individualistic perception nothing outside in the collective is actually going to be affected in any way shape or freaking form so this is where it's going to be very very important okay it's karmic yet yeah. 
The work it takes to bring polarities together in fresh ways is monumental. And it really is. You know what? We're going to go back to some super ancient mastery, some deep, deep overstandings that were previously just, you know, hidden in that esoteric part because, again, we cannot cast pearls before swine. And the whole, you know, secret society, the Illuminati, the, the Freemasons, the Bilderbergs, the Knights Templars, the Eastern stars, like everything has been hidden so that we here have to have some sort of collective intelligence in order to decipher this so that we don't destroy ourselves with the same knowledge that is meant to free us because all, all things again, you know, it's like the Death Star, okay? It's like Super Star Wars. Um, the Death Star had the ability to blow up entire planets. But it also would have had the power to in, like explode a consciousness of light throughout the universe, depending on who had that power. The power to destroy is a power to heal. The power to heal is a power to destroy. Once again, the force is in one, one concept of a monumental overstanding. And that work is utterly redemptive of infinite meaning and scope. In, open, in opening doors and letting totality and by conviction, by affinity, and by surrender to the great inevitable. The great inevitable is our evolution of consciousness. And it is absolutely this place of totality that we do have to surrender to. And whenever, again, you know, we've been talking about this, we, we're surrendering to the self that is in constant communication with the higher energies that a lot of us have just discounted and not realized. And now we can come into this place of absolute totality of knowingness. Now that was the, the degree of the sun today at 11 degrees of Capricorn and the moon at 11 degrees of Cancer where this opposition is going to happen and we're going to have this full moon coming in on the new year, the first day of the new year. It's going to be a big fucking ending. Okay, so chew on that degree for a second and then chew on this one. Monstrosities in a glass jar at a sideshow. It's the freak show. <laughs> Plagued by glitches. Stuck in anomalies. You feel activistically caught in very strange old places that will not budge for anything. Self-doubt. Self-negation. Self-sabotage. Excruciatingly self-conscious. The glare of the spotlight falls upon chronic unconscious syndromes. Places where hiding and massive dysfunction seem to be the only security and safety. The unwitting, subtle fostering of clusters of negativity and confusion, perpetuating the problem of doggedly refusing to see for what it is. The extravagant pretense that all of this is a joke or something gross and trivial. Yet, in the end, being stopped by little shadow dwellers just becomes too painful for you to rationalize any farther. And the freakish syndromes you tried so hard to pawn off on everything else comes back home to be uprooted with deep silver will. Now that's really deep and super deep. Um, you know, these monstrosities in a glass jar to sideshow is the freak show of life that many of us have once, uh, you know, or twice or a million times or every fucking day felt like we were the monstrosities in the glass jar, that we were the main attraction in the freak shows. And that, you know, we've been plagued by all of these glitches, which are, you know, not glitches whatsoever. Now, here's the thing that I do want to say about star seeds and also the rh negative blood in reference to all of this okay because the rh positives and the rh negatives there are blood groups the o positive blood group is the original human in which the rh negatives were spawned from whenever there was a blending of the original human with the demigods, quote unquote, that come from other star systems. So the RH negative are more so representing the original star seeds and the RH positives are representing the original human. 
Now, we all have a different lineage and we've all blended and mixed to a very large degree at this point to where it doesn't matter what your blood type is, you still do have a lot of recessive traits and genes running through your particular bloodlines because of course, whenever we get into Sirius, we get into the Anunnaki, we get into the Illuminati blood bloodlines, we get into the blood wars and we get into the blood types. And whenever we're talking about cancer, this is again where Canis Major is. Canis Major is actually located from seven degrees of cancer all the way up to 29 degrees. And it is a very powerful leading edge, you know, swirl. It's serious and Canis Major. Um, Canis Major is one of the oldest. Okay, Canis Major, Canis Minor and Betelgeist that we were just talking about yesterday, it's a first generation star, but whenever we get to talking about the stars that are in Canis Major and Sirius in particular, they are now new generation. They are not old generation. They're not first generation. They are, they are part of this newer technology. So we elevate a different perspective on this one, okay? But Getting back to this degree, stuck in anomalies, you feel activistically caught in very strange old places that will not budge for anything. And we're, we're getting unstuck from a lot of the ways that our government and society and structures viewed everything. So a lot of people, yes, they do feel stuck in old places, but we are not going to be um, those beings. We are, again, of starseed origins. We are not the original humans. And we are activating through these points in the chart that are, that are just here to lead, okay? Here to gain the authority and gain the position through love, through the understanding of the cosmic universal consciousness and bring these old places to, uh, to the unsticking, all right? Self-doubt, self-negation, self-sabotage, excruciatingly self-conscious. This is some old world perspectives and some old world ways of living. And this is where you really know if you're stuck in those spots, you know, that's going to hold you back. So we're releasing ourselves into the infinite. We're releasing ourselves into the surrender that the last degree was talking about so that we're not in these places. The glare of the spotlight falls upon chronic unconscious syndromes. Places where hiding and massive dysfunction seems to be the only security and safety. The basic bit syndrome has been a big plague of this society and this modern culture, this extreme need for reassurance and reaffirmation, this, this attention whore syndrome. And Okay, I posted a article about narcissists on my Facebook and it's very impactful. It's very impactful because narcissists need heaps of attention and it doesn't matter who it's from. And I, me personally, if I do get attention, I would love it to be from a source that I can actually, you know, be in a respect and reciprocal experience with. Attention whores, narcissists, they just don't care. It doesn't matter who it comes from. It could come from a blowing piece of dirt that they hear, you know, metaphorically speaking, for sure. Um, they just want to hear. And they don't even care if the honor or the accolades are real or true. They, they'll big themselves up on fake followers, fake likes, fake views, fake subscriptions, just as if it was real. And this is that like sun conjunct Neptune type of vibration that I'm talking about where it's the illusion and delusion of reality. It's not fucking truth. And the truth is what sets everybody free. So whenever you mask yourself with this extraordinary self-confidence, but you just need and you just take and you just suck, you know, you're the succubus and the succubi, and you're just living off the energy of everybody else because you find yourself to be superior and supreme, and that is the Illuminati type of fucking suppression that our world has been stuck in that has created an extreme amount of self-doubt and self-negation within the rest of the population who is true life true love, true beings of starseed origin that is here to fucking evolutionize this planet. And sorry, we're not sitting down no fucking more. Okay, this is our year of evolution and revolution. Uranus is about to come out of its retrograde. And this is it. 
All of that ancient keys, wisdoms, and codes that we've acquired over that on an individualistic perspective is going to move forward, going to move into the sign of Taurus, and we're going to revolutionize, pulverize the foundation of everything that this planet stands on. The Earth's axis might actually shift at that point because our consciousness shifts. You know, electromagnetic current, the Earth's Access is not something that you can just flip over. It's a magnetic force of turning it right side up again. Like I'm trying to say is like the ancient Egyptians recognized the other side of the freaking time scale as the new year. And we're over here celebrating today is this fictitious new year of our poles have been shifted. Our consciousness has been shifted. We need to illuminate once again. So get ready for that evolution revolution to happen in a massive fucking like blast in your face. So seriously, cut the lies, cut the shit, cut the narcissistic gaslighting bullshit straight out because you're getting left behind. You were so getting left behind if you have any fucking mass left over. Wipe it off. You know, it's like I can wear waterproof mascara, but I use coconut oil and butt wipes to get it off. Okay, I gotta have something to cut through something that's stuck. What's your cut through agent? You know, it's real. It's so real. I'm going to be tripping big time on this all day. Um, the unwitting subtle fostering of clusters of negativity and confusion. Yeah, those clusters are what we were just talking about. And I'm sorry, my tolerance level for that is finished. For a lot of it, it a lot of us it is. And so this is where, you know, we're working to not become so jaded on moving forward because we just get ill, 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 ill of dealing with these people that are just so like addicted to lies, you know, addicted to the misuse of their power. And Babylon will shall fall once again, you know, a burn Babylon, a Rasta say, you know, and that's what it is. It's for the purification, for the remineralization. But again, everything has to be destroyed in order for it to come back. And again, full moons are endings. Bye byes. We're starting the new year in our perceived upside down polarity of consciousness with a fucking ending. And you know what? If we were to flip those poles right side up, we would gain the understanding that this is the ending of that sort of suppression of consciousness. Yeah. Hmm. Perpetuating the problem by doggedly refusing to see it for what it is. Yeah. You know, people can get handed the opportunity to tell the truth on a fucking silver platter and they'll still try to lie their way out of it even after they've been caught. And we're going to see a lot of that play out. We're going to see a lot of that play out because those that were born during the time frame to lead into the truth are the ones who are going to be tested. And they're at that age. They are just turning 30, right? Yo. And this is a time in life whenever they have to step up, be men be women, be leaders of the forefront of the evolution into human consciousness, uh, going into the eye of the Buddha, right? Just coming from Beetle Geist at the eye of, eye of Taurus, okay? Uranus about to go into Taurus and us about to shift our consciousness. It's going to have to be led by these people that are born of Saturn at the galactic center on its last rotation. That's why you're all motherfucking asses are here. So step the fuck up and step out of the illusions that were placed, okay? You have a test. It's called Sun Conjunct Neptune. You have a test. You have to pass that test. You have to see your own truth, and you can redeem yourself. This is about redemption. This is about karmic redemption. Every moment again, ebbing and flowing. <sighs> the extravagant pretense that all of this is a joke or something gross and trivial. And yeah, the motherfucking universe has jokes and everybody who expresses it's got some seriously sick ones going on too. So some of us have been played with in some massive ways and it seems very disgusting. Okay, a lot of us are disgusted with the way things have gone and that's something that we need to go ahead and transmute as well because this has all been a process. None of it is happenstance. None of it is actually negative whenever you look at it and its singularity of all of these lessons were necessary to bring us to the point in which we are in human consciousness and evolution. And I am talking to you right now because of everything that has transpired before this moment in time. And it's coming through in this way because yet in the end, 
being stopped by little shadow dwellers just becomes too painful for you to rationalize any further. And a lot of us have suffered through that time and time again. And, and we just have given up. A lot of people have given up and lost hope. But that's not what it's all about. And the freakish syndromes you tried so hard to pawn off on everything else come back home to be uprooted with deep, sober will. This is facing your shadow side. This is important because Pluto is in the sign of Capricorn and it's making some serious aspects to other planets. It's going to be opposing the moon. Also, you know, as we transition into the second and as we go into that place where Uranus is going to go direct once again. So let me talk about some of the things, some of the aspects that are going on in the chart today. The moon is going to be opposing Venus within a one degree orb at the same time that we are having this full moon. Mars is going to be trining the moon at about three degrees. Jupiter will also be in that trine at a five degree orb. Neptune will be in an exact uh, trine to Neptune, or Neptune to the moon. The moon and Neptune will be in an exact trine. And Pluto will be in an opposition of seven degrees at the same time that this full moon is happening. And I'm, I'm not sure if I said new moon, sorry about that. Uh, but these are some of the aspects just with the moon, okay? Moon opposite sun, Venus and Pluto. Moon trines, Mars, Jupiter, and Neptune. All at the same moment, the sun. It's going to sextile over to Mars at a three degree orb and also sextile at a zero degree orb to Neptune. All right. It's, it's going to be a lot of energy pumping through at one moment. And I can't say enough for that, right? Because it's just so much power pumping through us. So much, so much power is going to pump through the charts at one moment in this grand water trine. Grand water trines is, you know, this harmony within flow, harmony within our healing abilities. Neptune, the planet of dreams, Neptune, what I'm talking about, the sun conjuncted Neptune back in 1988, okay? Whenever Saturn was at the galactic center the last time around, before it came through, on this last journey before it stepped back into the sign of Capricorn. So if you can see where I'm going with this, now it's in this extreme expression to the sun once again, but it's a sextile. So whenever things come into harmonies, it, it's like, yes, it's very beautiful. It's a dimensional portal. It allows you to be creative and artistic and, and, and have this just like dreamscape, all these multi- um, iridescent colors just sh enthralled over your perception of reality. It's beauty in the eye of the beholder, but literally it does test the consciousness of a being to see things clear, to see things in a in in their truth and in their non non illusions. Okay. We can't keep robbing people of free will through our desire to suppress with lies and manipulation. And that's what the biggest point of all of this is because that's what esoteric information has been. I'm a sun in Scorpio, okay? Eighth house. I have my south node and Mercury there. So it's like I highly am super occult driven. And that's what I'm saying here. You know, Mars is going to try and the moon and sextile the sun during this full moon. And Jupiter is going to trine the moon at the same time as well. So this illumination of all of the shadow side, the dark occult that has, is not really dark. It's, it's us having to, to cover, to cover truth with the shrouds of darkness so that only those who have eyes that can see will see. Not everybody was meant to have this knowledge. Not everybody can handle it. And not everybody was designed of the nature to be born into it within this collective time sphere. And that's something that we really have to realize. 
Venus is in a two degree orb to the sun of conjunction. It's blending energies and harmonies. We've been feeling this over the last couple of days. Venus is now at nine degrees of Capricorn at this moment. And Saturn is still at one degrees of Capricorn. All right, Mercury is now at 19 degrees. So we are just about a day and a half until Mercury is past the post shadow and we move into a higher level of new consciousness. This is going to be our last moments of that final last degrees of the post shadow before we bust into a higher dimension of knowing truth and reality in the context of everything that I'm talking about right now. You know, because Chiron is in a square to Mercury. And this is also, Mercury is also in a trine to Uranus. Uranus and Mercury are trining today at five degrees, and uh, Chiron square is also five degrees. So this is intense because, you know, as well, sorry, <laughs> it's like so much is going on. Mercury is trining the north node, and this is a three degree orb. So powerful degrees of illuminations we have the triple 11 degree activation right sun moon and neptune which are all connecting with one another and master number 11 2018 actually equals 11 it's our mastery being born but we're gonna have to go through a very deep regeneration of our shadow before we get to that point Okay, so today is a big reminder of what is hidden, is of deep, deep need for excavation within ourselves, within very strong need of illumination, right? Think about it from this perspective, Mars and Jupiter conjuncting together, three degree orb, okay? We are passionately, emotionally driven to excavate these parts of self that have reference to Pluto, who also naturally rules the sign of Scorpio. Now, Mars is not the only one. Um, I should say Scorpio is not the only ruler of Mars. It's also Aries. Aries is the natural ruler of Mars, and Mars is the natural ruler of Aries, however you want to really express that. But... You know, one is one is individual and one is more undercurrent collective. So we have the fire that Mars rules and we also have the water. You put fire and water together, it creates steam. And steam is for opening up the pores, is for detoxifying, but it's hot. And it can also, you know, be caused by heat meeting cool. Again, that's the same representation. Scorpio is such a deep level of water that it's it's often represented as like an iceberg, you know, in, in the Arctic where the icebergs are huge, just like cabins under the water because it's a fixed water sign. And it hides those deep parts of self really far underneath the surface once again, which is why it's known to be the secret keeper of the chart. It represents death and rebirth. And I am a Scorpio that just lost my mother, my flesh shoots mother. Um, she transitioned into the next lifetime. She did it on her solar return. Her son, whenever it came back to five degrees of Capricorn, was the moment that she left. And I'll share this story right now. I held my mom in my arms and I, I cuddled with her. You know, I held her like this and I was looking at her throat and I could see her heart beat in her throat and I could see it beating, beating and just stop. And it was powerful. It was so powerful because what I saw, like my forehead was touching her forehead. And thank you, Lupita Popper. This beautiful energy chi device was right on her crown chakra. This piece of calcite that she held in her hand for the last year and a half straight was on her solar plex. <laughs> you know, she transitioned into pure light in the, the five star tetrahedron, the, the Merkaba that you hear about, the interdimensional transporting device, 
activated and just went through the room. I felt it go through my body. Everyone who's touched me since that moment has been like, whoa, like electric current flowing through them. They're just like, oh my God, you feel like pure electricity. And I feel like that too. I feel so multidimensionally connected with everybody. But I really wanted to share that with you and, and give thanks, you know, for, for all pieces of life whenever they go multidimensional because this is something that we're going to be talking about. All right? We have to talk about it for today because whenever the moon comes around to conjunct Sirius, this is going to be a serious experience and the moon is going to conjunct Sirius again at 1022 p.m. Pacific Standard Time at 14 degrees of Cancer. So this will still be in an opposition to all of those energies. It will still be in the Grand Water Trine. It will still be the Grand Kite that is forming with the stability point being on the Earth. Okay, the cat, the, the the equator separated by the cancer, the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn, separated by the masculine and feminine. And we get deep into the Isis and Osiris, the Orion and Sirius, whole story all over again. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and read the degree for Sirius at 14 degrees of Cancer because this is something that we need to start this topic with once again. A dried up stream covered with smooth rocks. Unless tragedy strikes, a new earth cannot be accessed. <laughs> Only as all the old familiar places dry up, there is a path to walk, revealed beneath pristine and beckoning. It is no use looking back. The way lies right here, strewn with experience, memory, loss, and redemption by walking onward. It is a difficult, painstaking journey from here. You have to go so deep inside, burrowing into the cave of navigational realization that you are held, cherished, known, given all you need yet all well required, commanded to become eternally purposeful and to be the path and to cease all complaining and extraordinary consciousness, an extraneous consciousness. This in order to do what is here to do with your entire being and ringing conviction and fidelity to the highest. This is my Saturn degree in the sign of Cancer. I have Saturn retrograde at 14 degrees of Cancer in the fourth house, okay? And it's pretty powerful, right? Because all of this energy of this full moon is in an opposition to my Saturn. So of course something monumental is going to happen and transform for me. That's probably why you see a different energy coming out of me at the moment, but this is so true to everything, right? Where the U.S. is coming up on its Pluto return. We just had a whole 84-year revolution of Uranus. Uranus comes back around every 83 to 84 years in the chart. And my mom, her Uranus retrograde conjuncted with Uranus retrograde on an entire revolution, entire evolution. And she went back to the formless. How fucking epic is that? So this is happening to our consciousness at the same time, all right? This Stargate portal is going to be open over these next few days. The moon is activating it right now for those star seeds from Sirius. I am a star seed from Sirius. This is my primary location, Sirius B, also represented by the retrograde. If you are a star seed and you have Saturn conjuncting one of these fixed stars that represents your exact star seed origin, that is a representation of where you came to Earth from. Saturn representing Earth, bringing to the Earth, incarnating on, on the Earth. Okay? Are you from Sirius A or Sirius B? That's going to come a lot from your meditations. It's never been a question in my mind. I've always known I was from Sirius B. But it is also represented to me as part of that retrograde. So the retrograde being another part of hidden occult information Planets have so much more power when they're retrograde, but a lot of us fear them because we've been taught to. Fear what you don't know. It's always such a good idea. 
It breeds happiness and joy, and it brings freedom for all, right? That's some bullshit, and we know it. But until you go into the deep esoterics of those retrograde planets, you don't really fucking know. So it's like Saturn retrograde is a representation that I have to use spiritual integrity whenever it comes to this degree. So, you know, dried up stream covered in smooth rocks. It was once covered by water. It was once touched by all elements, water, sand, air, storms. And now those rocks are smooth and they have a story to tell. Because unless tragedy strikes, a new earth cannot be accessed. So what was once covered with water shall now be removed so that we can see what's underneath the fall, the fallen city of Atlantis. If the seas were to part and we could see what was buried underneath these deep waters of Scorpio, Jupiter and Scorpio, we might unearth our ancient civilization past. But it happens every day in our meditations when we intentionally decide to biolocate, um, quantumly biolocate to relocate to another starseed place of origin. So tap into Sirius today. We're going to talk more about it. This is going to be a really long daily. <laughs> Only all of the old familiar places dry up in these, and there is a path to walk revealed beneath pristine and beckoning. This is exactly it, right? Unearthing truths that are buried deep beneath so that you can see them pristine and beckoning like the five star. So going to get into it. It is no use looking back. It's not. The way lies right here. Stone with experience, memory, loss, and redemption by walking onward. So again, this is redemptive. This is karmic. And this is, this is our time where we have to release those old ways. We can't look back on the past any longer. Sometimes we do have to look back in order to know where we are now and then project forward. But this is the thing is that all time frames are really now, past, present, and future. The only moment in existence is now. So all you need to do is pull multidimensionality into the harmonization of your frequency range and transmute it into the next octave so that you can travel those dimensions with knowing, with esoteric knowing. Esoteric meaning truth beneath the surface. Once again, Keep the truth beneath the surface so that it, you can walk what is beneath in its revealed, pristine form because it's been beckoning you. It's been calling you onward to redeem yourself. Do the redemptive work. Stop. Super fucking stop at this moment. Any of that shit? And you know the shit I'm talking about. You stop it right fucking meow. Really. The cosmic pimp hand is motherfucking strong. And some of you are going to get knocked straight off this planet. Just because your ego is so fucking strong and so like bridge oriented, wall building, non fucking seeing anything but yourself having like done. Sorry. Bye. You know, bye bye. No mas. All right. It is a different painstaking journey from here. And yeah, some of it's going to hurt. Ouch. Ouch. Ooh. E. <laughs> For real, some of y'all are going to be walking on glass, shards of glass every step of the way as you redeem yourself from all of the shit that you previously solidified when you was not listening to the cosmos speak in your face direct. All right? Harsh, I know. <laughs> you have to go so deep inside burrowing into the cave of navigational realization that you are held cherished known given all you need yet well required commanded to become entirely purposeful and to be the path and to cease all complaining and extraneous consciousness all right this is no more complaining no more of anything that is 
you know, extraneous consciousness is a false consciousness. We're coming back into the realization because we have gone so deep and navigated our shadow side to such an extreme that we've come out held and to be cherished once again, to be given all that we need once again, and to be well equipped to command the new earth into the leadership of the starseed activation for those who are original humans coming into contact with original starseeds and blending our nature so that we have become one as above so below as our star origins we are now incarnated into the bodies of man here on planet earth and we are no longer just original anythings we are cosmic everythings you dig this is that redemptive work that we really need to do this is serious <laughs> seriously this in order to do what is here to do what your entire being in ringing conviction and fidelity to the highest. You know, my flesh suit's original name means oath to God. My name, Maru, is all things surrounding love or center of the universe. <laughs> Maru Matu is translated in ancient Buddhist Hindu as key to the universe. Flat Earth theory being based off Mao Maru. You know, it's pretty interesting, but Matu is the New Age translation of Ma'at. Truth, order, and unity was my biggest reggae song ever. It was on a compilation with Sizzler and Pressure and Turbulence and Ja Mason. And then there's me, Maru Matu, the only female smack dab in the middle of the whole thing. It's called The World Go Round Rhythm. If any of you want to check it out, it's on iTunes. The song is actually called Truth, Order, and Unity. And it's in reference to Ma'at, Matu, these 42 universal laws that are here in order to do what I am here, what we are here, what you are here to do with our entire being ringing, right? Ringing conviction and fidelity to the highest, the highest of universal law, consciousness and order, right? Again, whenever we go through oppositions, like the moon is included in this opposition to Venus during this full moon in conjunction to the sun. So what kind of an ending and what kind of a beginning, what kind of a illumination of stark realization are we going to have to be, go through right now with Venus? Our planet that represents self-love, worth, value, love, money, um, possessions. Love and self, love and another. What we hold and give value to. What do you give value to in this world? What, what is going to end and what is going to begin? What are you going to see through? What are you going to breathe into? And what are you going to harmonize this new world? Because Venus in the sign of Capricorn is very strong. It's very powerful. It's very rooted into the foundation of what society is deemed proper and how we're going to transition that into a more unconditional, more free loving society that doesn't hide truth any longer in order to be accepted because of fear of non-acceptance. So this is going to be part two of this whole talk because we're going to bust into a whole nother multidimensionality. But, you know, there is one thing that I do want to point out about this illusion and delusion that's pumping through the chart in reference to Neptune that's in the sign of Pisces, at home in the sign of Pisces. It is direct, and whenever planets are direct, especially Neptune, things are harder to see, okay? So Neptune is in a trine to the moon, sextile to the sun, as I mentioned previously. It is sextiling Venus, and it is trining Mars and Jupiter. So that's a ton of Neptunian vibrations, and it's all harmonics. Um, easy harmonies are what they call support and potential between the sextiles and the trines, but too much of too much is too much. So it can be very easy to fall into fantasies, to get tricked into, um, you know, people's lies and manipulations. 
And it's going to be way easier for people to think that they can continue on that path because it's going to feel like they're supported in it. And that's where it's just like, you know, again, Babylon shall fall, that shit not going down upon here. Okay, so I did want to just point that out one more time that in reference to, you know, everything, Neptune is touching it. Okay, and it is in the sign of Pisces. Whenever we look at the age of Pisces, we look at it as the coming of the Christ, whenever Christ was born, um, and that was, a, that was a symbol. So it symbolizes the split in our consciousness. You know, those of you who have Pluto in the sign of Pisces in your draconic chart, your draconic chart being the chart from the soul's perspective, you can see that you are a being who is incarnated into the age of Pisces, plus you may have been here during the time that Christ walked this planet. Jesus Christ, right? And, you know, this is a time uh, that they were basically using manifestation powers to seem like miraculous miracles. And it's very profound because we just come out of a time frame whenever we celebrate the perceived birth. Okay? But it is the birth of our illuminated Christ consciousness coming back now. And that can all be born through the Neptunian realization that the dream is really reality and reality is really the dream and that there is no such thing as physicality because we are all energy born of God, source creator um, of Pisces. Okay? So it was a representation of the split in the brain. The, the, the two fish swimming in opposite directions. And the Pisces fish, the bottom fish in, the, in, in Pisces is actually the one that is known to have eaten Osiris' phallus whenever he was dismembered by his brother Set. He, all 13 pieces came back together that Isis put into one unified whole and then created a golden phallus to then create Horus, which was his reincarnation, which is an, another example of Sirius, okay? Now, I want to talk about Sirius in the second half quite seriously on many levels because, again, this is our starseed activation on a very magnitude, very high magnitude, and um, <clears throat> we're having so much being rebirthed from this place, okay? Sirius is known as the oversoul of um, Neptune and Venus, okay? So Neptune is the oversoul of Venus. <clears throat> Sirius is the highest level of what you would call like the God consciousness of Neptune and Venus. So Venus is like the morning star that was birthed from the golden phallus of Osiris, whenever Isis used sexual alchemy along with life force regeneration that Capricorn represents once again, um, taking old life and regenerating it into a new physical form. Sound familiar? With the energy alchemy that Scorpio, Mars and Jupiter conjuncting in Scorpio, sound familiar? This is all coming into such epic proportions right now. Such epic proportions because you know, Orion is associated with Osiris, Sirius is represented by Isis, and we go into the ancient mysteries, we go into those very deep esoteric parts where we understand that, um, you know, the sun god Ra, the, the, the god that was the sun based in ancient Egypt was actually, uh, the truth was Sirius. And it's the brightest star in the entire sky. You can see it almost year round from any hemisphere and any place but we have to come into this uh you know realization that th there is a time whenever it goes dark and there is a time whenever we can't see it this is a time you know 35 days before and 35 days after the sun conjunct sirius uh, around July 4th is whenever the ancient Egyptians would not bury their dead because Sirius was seen as a gateway into the heavens. So this is a big part of our culture, a big part of the suppression of information that we have not been privy to because we were, you know, not given, given these true truths like the Vedas, right? Even in ancient Vedas, the star was known as the chieftain star. And in Hindu writings, it was referred to as Sukra. It's, it's the rain god, the rain star. The dog star is what it's mostly equated to. 
the silver star, the eastern star, because it rises on the eastern horizon. So you see most of the Masonic temples on the east, in the east. <laughs> But it, 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 the dog star is, is also describing he who awakens the god of the air and summons them to their office to bring the rain. Sounds very similar to the story that we just learned about um, Alcyon located in the Pleiades and the transmutation into this avian creature that was protected by the air from the water in order to nest and regenerate new life. You know, the ancient Egyptians, Sirius was, was basically like revered as the Nile star because it, it was marking the point whenever the Nile River would be at its highest or its lowest, whenever things would be considered barren or whenever they would be considered fruitful. And it was what appeared annually just before the solstice of June 21st. And to us, that's the, the summer solstice. But it's, it's like this place. It's this place that we inscribe in so many different temples to show us about the ebb and the flow, the rising and the lowering of consciousness, the rising and the lowering of perceived life, the, the journey into the underworld or the afterlife to go back and, and basically meet Anubis. Anubis was also highly associated with Sirius, you know, being called the dog star. It's for Anubis. Anubis was the passer, you know, the yes or the no of you're going to heaven or you're going back on the reincarnation wheel. And we all know that Osiris has been given this title as well through the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. He talks a lot about this Isis Osiris, um, you know, afterlife journey and what it takes to journey into these places with success. And we do want to go back home to our starseed origins. We do want to enter into the temple of Isis and Hathor. You know, we want to get into like this place where we know that Her Majesty Isis shines into the, into the temples. And on New Year's Day, she, she mingles her light with that of her father on the horizon. Isn't that beautiful? That's what today is. It's a New Year's Day whenever this occurs. Whenever Her Majesty Isis shines into the temple on New Year's Day and mingles her light with that of the Father on the horizon. And we know that that of the Father on the horizon is Osiris in the constellation of Orion, Beetle Geist just being highly activated. And you know, as well, Sirius, a dog star in mythology, was the watchman of the heavens. Fixed into one place is the bridge of the Milky Way, keeping guard over the abyss into incarnation. So checking those souls and checking them twice. And we know as the ancient rule, the Illuminati rule, the blue blood suppression that does come from Sirius, those reptilian agendas, those unconscious forms, those are no longer being able to regenerate on the reincarnation wheel here to earth so that a new rulership can take over and that is the light. The light is born in the dark and my genealogy in particular, I am a walk-in but I chose this body for a very specific reason and it's for its lineage. I came from Sirius B in order to illuminate this physical vessel with the O negative, RH negative blood type with the lineage as the 99th generation of Amun-Ra tracked through every king and queen all the way up into present. My mother who just passed was the 98th generation of Amun-Ra. In order to really implement this truth and shine the light from the same vessel to alchemize darkness back into light. And this is part of it. This is seriously part of it because it's a symbol of power, will, and a steadfastness of purpose. This is our purpose here of infinity, infi infinite success and in bringing those lower and higher levels of consciousness into balance and unity. And this is a star seed. This is the reason that we from Sirius are here. The old construct of the Syrian incarnations is over because from each lifetime, the soul judges the past process, progress through this activation, through Anubis, through Isis, through Osiris, through the regeneration and rebirth of the self. It's crazy, you know? 
It's really crazy how this story all comes together and how we can communicate again all of that into this particular incarnation and realize that throughout all of the, you know, civilizations of past have been talking about this. The dog with the blazing face, the large dog, the dog star, once again, no, man's best friend called the dog because of the loyalty and the love, the unconditional love, the star that shines bright in the sky all year round. And you know, sometimes we get our heart broken and it dims that 35 days before and after its ascension around July 4th, it comes into that unity where we see we again, we ebb and we flow through that vibe. And here's the thing about those from Sirius is that they first incarnated approximately 200,000 years ago, um, coming in the bodies of about 20 men and 20 women and starting to import the DNA into the human civilization, bringing advanced technologies that have a lot to do with frequencies and vibrations because we're talking about uh, dolphins and whales, they come from Sirius also. So they read energy. They are the, the vibration of discernment. And all of our ancient societies, once again, they all use the five star, all right? The five star of David, the five star tetrahedron of sacred geometry, the five star of pimp my matrix in the upright form to represent the light and not the darkness or the polarity. It's the force that's used in the same will. This is Pimp My Matrix is a representation of my starseed origins from Sirius. And we're here again, right? We're here again. Like souls, stars are regarded as having divine attributes. Stars look down from the regions that seem of, of chaos and violence and purity into worlds of humanity and influence and energies of humankind invisibly, yet most powerfully, okay? That's a really powerful like statement, and I'm gonna say that again. Like souls, stars are regarded as having divine attributes. Stars look down from regions of chaotic, violent purity into the world of humanity and influence the energies of mankind invisibly, yet most powerfully. The most powerful forces in nature are that of an invisible frequency, vibration, and resonance only. And it seems like it's chaos, but it's coming through in such a clear form because stars go supernova and create black holes. What we were talking about, Beetle Geist, it's, it's any time it's supposed to go supernova, right? And it's a first generation star once again. Sirius here. We, it's, it, it's way bigger in series A, B, and C. The Dogons knew about series B and series C long before we had the technology to see it. They could intuit the telepathic communication that was coming from the stars, from their locations of origins through their starseed activations because they were original starseeds here on this planet knowing why they came, not forgetting their memories. When these violent storms erupt in the cosmos or in planet Earth, it's all the same. But in so many profound ways, influenced by these energies, we are of an invisible nature. It's said that the fixed stars also and their domain contain the essence of souls of matter. A living soul is a higher essence of matter and when evolved may also be called a star. These stars and essences, essences become gods. And I'm gonna say that again too. It is said that the fixed stars, which are our starseed locations, remember when your, your planets conjunct these locations within two degrees, that is whenever this is your origin of place. It is said that the fixed stars and their domain contain the essence or souls of matter. A living soul is a higher essence of matter and when evolved may also be called a star. These stars and essences become gods. So he who embodies the highest vibration of stars amongst men become gods amongst men. And we know that to be true from the Emerald Tablets of Thoth as well. Thoth was the teacher of 
Isis, and Osiris. We have the ancient initiated schools of wisdom through Thoth's teachings. Thoth is represented in the chart as Mercury. And Mercury is the messenger who is also the trickster, who is also a hermaphrodite, who out of formless body does not claim masculine nor feminine because the unity is purity within the whole of vibrationally matching the essence of the star. So when we actually look up at Sirius, it's fucking crazy because Sirius itself is like a bright white bluish and then Sirius B is red. And then Sirius C is also more blue. So it's like red, white, and blue all twinkling. And what is, you know, the, 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 the United States sun is conjunct Sirius. All right. We just had the Pluto opposition to Sirius. Whenever Pluto passed over 14 degrees of Capricorn, which if you were born January 5th, 1988, your sun is at 14 degrees of Capricorn. Wow, right? And not that long ago, Pluto ran over your ego ass. Did you learn? Did you learn? Because Pluto's message is transformed now or die. Hope you did. Hope you fucking did. Because you also have Neptune conjunct your sun. Oh, shit. And Saturn at the galactic center. God damn, right? God damn. And that's just a reference of that. But if your birthday is January 5th, then, you know, your sun is opposite Sirius. And that is very serious because your sun is also conjuncting the fixed star of Vega at 15 degrees of Capricorn. And this is a, this is a Stargate axis as well. So as we progress through this month, the sun will be activating the constellation of Lyra through the sun, through Venus. And then as Mercury does transition into Capricorn, it will be fast moving very soon. And that will happen sooner than you possibly think. And we will be having some major Vega Lyra and starseed activations and in opposition to Sirius, okay? So if you are someone who has planets exactly opposite, such as I'm referencing here with the sun, then you have a connection to these starseed places. You may have traveled there. You may have been married to a Syrian as you are from Vega, you know, vice versa. But it's not saying that your DNA is from that location. It's saying that you do have a connection just as, you know, I was... I walked in here in Seattle. I was born in Santa Barbara, this physical bodysuit, but I lived in South Africa. So I'm not from South Africa, but I do have a connection there. And that is what the representation of the opposition is in your starseed origin. So I do hope that that helps out, you know, because we have to dive deeper into our origins. And I'm actually going to, I'll be doing a live for New Year's and we'll all come together. We'll all, all have some conversations about this. We'll get deeper into the starseed activation of those who are from this location and also talk a little bit more about Vega. Uh, that's going to be coming up as we go through. This is a video that I'm putting out on YouTube complimentary because it is such a big freaking deal of this full moon happening at the same time that we're going to hit Sirius and activate in these massive proportions on January 1st of 2018. Master number 11. Pretty fucking deep. Now, I do want to also give another great big thanks to Brianna Taylor. She's literally like my earth angel incarnate. And I want to thank her so very truly for starting a GoFundMe for my mommy's uh, funeral expenses, for everything involved in that. If you would like to support, definitely uh, I will post a link to the GoFundMe. But yeah, my mom did have term life insurance and she did outlive it. And so, you know, the thing is, it's crazy. Is when Social Security was created, they haven't changed any of that since the day it began. You used to get, well, you still get $250 for burial costs. And back whenever Social Security first started, that was plenty. But it is not even funny how big of a joke that is at this time. So um, maybe moving forward into this new year and this new Uranus revolution around the zodiac we can change some of these past programs and past capricornian governmental babylon structures that need to be evolved you know all of the fixed nature 
Like I mentioned, in 2018, we're working up to Uranus moving into the sign of Taurus, and it's going to be moving really fast after it goes forward once again in, in relationship to how fast Uranus really moves. It's an outer planet, but it's going to come faster than we can realize, and we need to have a plan of action for whenever these changes get implemented. So what is it that we're working on moving forward? Because we can't just leave old earth behind in shambles. We actually have to ascend it. Mother earth wants to come as a whole piece as we do for ourselves. So this ascension that's happening on an individual and collective basis is, is transforming every day. And it's resonating into higher levels of dimensional truth every freaking day. Okay? So I love you all so very much. Happy full moon in Cancer opposite the sun in Capricorn and happy conjunction of the moon activating your starseed origins from Sirius. Tap in, meditate, give duality its praise and do go through your shadow side. Take a walk on the dark side and join the force of light and love and come into some unified abundance with all of us. All right. I love you all so very much, and I will see you tomorrow. Job bless. Gonna travel them planets and them galaxies. Gonna take it places you never thought you'd see. Gonna kiss the stars like a lover one. Fill the empty space.